I'm not in social media and I, I trained myself not to read about myself wow. because like the more I thought about it and the more I got affected also by praise mm. it's not only by critic but also like praise and critic sticks with you if you want it or not and I don't want it and in the end I ask myself why would I read something about my team and about my match who should know better mm -hmm. than me why should I read something and maybe get affected Very warm welcome to all of you to Ayurvedic Healing and Beyond. And in today's episode, I have a very inspiring special guest. Someone, maybe many of you know if you are a fan of football. Mm -hmm. But this guy is a genius and many football critics consider him arguably one of the best coaches ever that we have seen. And he has come for an Ayurvedic treatment, which was a big honor to everybody in Ayurveda and to everyone in Kerala. And it is none other than Thomas Tushar. So Thomas, thank you so much <laughs> thank for you. being a part of this Ayurveda treatment and also for agreeing for this interview. Thank you for, for having me and thanks for the introduction. It was <laughs> very kind, very kind. So Thomas, what brought you for Ayurveda in the first place? Um, well, since since long time, I, I got closer and closer to Ayurveda through through meditation and got familiar with the lifestyle and with uh, with the routine that is attached. Um, to this philo uh, philosophy and, and I had a, always a good feeling about it and I had um, a very demanding year and some demanding years in private sector and uh, personally and uh, very demanding years in the last four years in, in working so I, I, it was my wish to come here since a long time one of my assistants uh, did Benny. it five six years ago and um, um, still we, we keep on talking about it so now was the moment for a little break and a new start in my life and I was uh, very happy until now to, that I did it. Fantastic and you know Thomas you have access to some of the best top tier uh, sports medicine or yeah. when it comes to health and fitness you'll have the best support I mean considering the kind of exposure yeah. that you have. Looking at all that experience in your past and after going through this intensive panchakarma treatment, where do you think this will fit in? I mean, for a person who is very health conscious like you, where would this fit in? I think it would fit in. Um, you are right. We, we have. I, I'm lucky to, to, to work in clubs like Chelsea in such a, or have worked in clubs like Chelsea with such a beautiful and uh, a setup and a, and a well well organized setup. To, to, to bring the best out of the players performance wise and there are like I think a lot of things that we that we experience here actually are also part of high level sports like mm -hmm. we have a routine we we, we, we we check what the players should eat what they should not eat we make them feel calm in the training center we provide um, a, a disciplined uh, rhythm for them that they could like um, generate their full potential so uh, on top of it there is there could be like uh, an improvement also with Ayurveda mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure but for example at Chelsea we had also an, an, an employee from from India who was uh, uh, teaching a mixture of, of yoga meditation special for the players and also for me to, mm -hmm. to calm down to, to relax especially before and after matches. I can imagine the kind of stress that you go through with the matches. Yeah. Uh, and you know, people say you are a very health conscious person. Yeah. So do you have a set of uh, like do's and don'ts? Like, you know, being in such a position, you'll also be invited to events where you have lots of heavy food, yeah. unhealthy food, yeah. alcohol, and it could be really late night. And, yeah, and if you nice. indulge in those things for a set period of time, people will naturally fall sick. Yeah. So how do you protect yourself from these triggers? Yeah, some of these things you cannot avoid actually. Like, mm -hmm. uh, like in work, I was like now in a period of two and a half years in Paris and straight after one and a half years at Chelsea. That means like four years consecutive um, of, of playing matches and a lot, a lot of matches are late night. Mm -hmm. So. 
I'm a person who struggles a little bit to eat too much before a match. It's like almost like the players. It's a light meal three hours before a match. But then after the match, the players like who really worked a lot, also physically, they just they can just they can more or less eat what they what they want. They and the it. temptation, the temptation is huge mm -hmm. to also to also eat a lot late at night. Mm -hmm. That means like a game is at 10, at 9 o'clock it can be 10, 11, close to midnight when you get food. Mm -hmm. And of course, as a coach, you release also a lot of stress. So it can happen that um, you eat also with the players a burger, you eat uh, sweets for, for dessert. And that, of course, affects your sleep and, and your, your mood and your, also your, your feeling the next day. So I was happy when I entered this high, high intensive period in Paris and in Chelsea that I already set up a routine for myself. Mm -hmm like a routine that, that, that is based on normally to not eat after 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. to, to try not to eat carbs for dinner, to try to reduce sugar, maybe leave sugar away for, for, for dinner and after sugar. There are always times where it's a bit easier, uh, sometimes not so easy. I mm -hmm. gave an interview in, in England after a defeat and they said, how did you cope with it? And I said, I, I needed two, two, <laughs> two real blocks of chocolate, I'm sorry, in the night and I needed to watch the game again. So this can happen, but I think your body can accept it better if in between you have your routine, mm -hmm. you have your sleep, you have your sport. So I, I'm, I tried this and I learned it, that it's healthy and good for me if I try to to, to have my alarm at the same day, then it includes also a routine to bring my children maybe to school, mm -hmm. then to have breakfast at the same time and to include like your at least 30 minutes of sports a day mm -hmm. uh, whenever possible. Wow, that sounds like a super routine German time. <laughs> yeah, I try. It, it's, it sounds maybe better than it is in real time, but um, I, I learned also not to expect them too much for myself. Mm -hmm. if the, if work becomes crazy and the stress is on and the games are on, I think it is also allowed to, to, to eat sometimes late, but it should not become a habit. Mm -hmm. And I think to be aware of it makes it easier than to live up to it and, and see the results that you feel you have more energy if you follow your routine, uh, when to eat, what to eat, mm -hmm. and, and to take your blood test regularly and to know what, what your body does not like in terms of allergic reactions. Mm -hmm. I think this is the first step and, and from there you go. I lost a lot of weight compared to my first six years of professional coaching to now. I lost a lot of weight. Yeah, when I was there, I did not have the routine. I did not have the knowledge mm -hmm. what is good for me. And um, I started after my first five, six years um, with the inspiration of Novak Djokovic and mm -hmm. his change of, of, of food, mm -hmm. being gluten-free and stuff like this. This inspired me a lot and brought me now all the way here. That's fantastic. And uh, Thomas, you know, since you coach with a lot of people, you also incorporate this to your players that work for you? I mean, that you coach? Yeah, we try and a lot of things are, of course, are of course also set up in a, in a club and as a, as a coach you, you try to lead by example. Mm -hmm. So I think if, if the players see a healthy coach and a, and a coach who has his routines, is disciplined with himself, it helps of course um, by nature to, to ask for mm -hmm. discipline and ask also for, to demand a, a high level of discipline from, from your players. Mm -hmm. But um, um, the, the setup is very professional in nowadays because there are so many matches to play and, and the players follow a pretty, pretty disciplined um, routine. But within this routine there are like exceptions and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's not a secret. The ones who live really up to the limit are yeah, the outstanding yeah. players. Mm -hmm. they, they, they live up to a certain lim limit of discipline which is extraordinary and that brings them to a to another level of performance. And Thomas, you know, the kind of job that you are, you know, you, on one hand, fame is really high, the performance is always, you know, valued. Yeah. But on the other hand, if something goes wrong, yeah. the whole world comes out of after you and everything is like, criticism can also be at the highest. Yeah. And is so at the highest. how do you deal with that? I mean, it's it a big you? subject it's and a uh, mental health problem sometimes. Yeah, it is. 
it is and, and for the players be. too because you should not let them lose their morale and for the players as well and for you as a team as well and as a club um, a loss is always a hard hit it's until now very very hard to deal mm -hmm. for me with a loss and I still need to improve um, in this particular aspect in my coaching and in, in my personal reaction to losses it hurts me a lot it's part of my competitive character mm -hmm. on this kind of level but it is Sometimes it affects me too much, so I, I struggle to deal with it. It helps me personally as a coach then to watch the match again, to understand like from this general feeling of, um, of um, this general negative feeling to channelize it into what really happened, mm -hmm. what can we do and from there create already maybe until the next day, create already solutions where we can improve what do we tell the team mm -hmm. and then there are very different aspects of losing i mean we played for example with chelsea two finals uh, in the cup in england against liverpool and we lost both in the in, in penalty shootout mm -hmm. and we had the feeling okay we left everything out there we had chances liverpool was one of the best attacking teams in europe at this moment there was we we kept them down to no goal against us we played zero zero both matches over time it was just this margin. little margin of luck and unluck, so there were no hard feelings. Mm -hmm. So then it's necessary to, to build your team up mm -hmm. and, and, and it's easier to process these kind of defeats. In general, it's, it's a huge influence because from outside and uh, I, my, my routine is to protect myself from it. Mm -hmm. the, I'm not in social media and I, I trained myself not to read about myself. Wow. Because, like, the more I thought about it and the more I got affected, also by praise, mm -hmm. it's not only by critic, but also like praise and critic sticks with you, if you want it or not. And I don't want it. And in the end, I ask myself, why would I read something about my team and about my match? Who should know better mm -hmm. than me? Why should I read something and maybe get affected? So I protect myself not to be on social media, but it is a thing for the players and sometimes you have to extremely work against it because they become affected, mm -hmm. sometimes addicted also to the praise and why is there no praise anymore and um, it is a constant battle. Sometimes you have to be very clear with your team mm -hmm. if you are like, if you think that we didn't give enough or we didn't follow the plan. So there is no general rule how to deal with a, with a, mm -hmm. with a defeat or with loss in general but it's it's quite challenging. I can, so they say, you know, failure is not something the end of the world. It's always a stepping stone to improve yourself. Yeah. But it's better said than how it is in action because it can yeah. really hit your heart. So every time there was a failure, you always take it as what are the lessons that I have to learn and from yeah. there that you take it further. Yeah, I try to dig in then. Um, it starts always from myself. I try to dig in the match, watch the match again how was my coaching how was my speech before did we did we analyze the opponent properly mm -hmm. was the strategy right so it always starts with me and i'm never shy to admit it to the team that i think i did a mistake mm -hmm. that i should have like uh, some setups uh, differently so this is kind of an open relationship that mm -hmm. i want to have also with my team and uh, and then you try to narrow it down to details to not get too complex and not get too general but like I said, sometimes you, you always have the luxury also to say, you know what, let's just forget it, let's keep on going. Mm -hmm. I think it was, uh, we can allow ourselves to go over it in three days is the next match, let's, mm -hmm. let's do the things better. Mm -hmm. So it depends to my feeling and to my, also to my experience, like over the years, what to do with the team and how to approach. But for me in person, sometimes I go late night for a run Mm -hmm. after midnight to sweat it out to improve my sleep when I come home very late um, it was a routine I started in Dortmund no matter if we won or lost I just went out at midnight for a run um, yeah go to the sauna or whatever mm -hmm. and and don't forget your routine because it helps you especially over moments where it gets tough and of course we all know we need these tough moments to improve but yeah, yeah, yeah. When they are there, it feels it a feels bit. Like it this feels like going to be forever. It yes. feels f like forever, mm -hmm. exactly. At that time, we need the self-talk. It's just not permanent. 
Yeah, yeah, you need the self-talk, you need also to experience mm. and you need some tools like focusing on the detail mm -hmm. and not on the big picture. Just like adjust some details and the big thing will get better. Mm. You know, sometimes when we watch the match on television, uh, the camera just focuses on the coach and the coach is like going all over the place. Really? <laughs> <laughs> And we think the coach is really like going through the opera. Like I the don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, in that, you know, some, some coaches really go yeah, like... Yeah, me, me too. They like, why is the match going like this? You should be playing like that. But does it really help to improve the performance of the team or it's more like the frustration is being released? Uh, yeah. Like, I would say like uh, most of it is like frustration and stress release for mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's normally a full stadium, the, the connection is very hard to get. Mm. Sometimes I feel sorry for the players who are close mm. because they are always the ones who, are getting who get the constant <laughs> feedback. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, like it's also, it, it happens to me regularly that the energy of a match like sucks you into it. Mm -hmm. But it's also a sign you give for your bench. I think like uh, if, if the substitutes and, and the staff on the bench sees all oh, the coaches is up, really to, is up to a fight and he's not shy maybe to fight with the other coach. It can also be a sign to be brave, mm -hmm. to be aggressive mm -hmm. and to not be too calm. But it works in both directions. And uh, of course, sometimes it's, I try to reach somebody and it, it looks like an opera, okay. but <laughs> it's more for me in the end. How was it during the COVID times? You know, there was no spectators in the stadium. And just it play. was much easier. Much Actually, easier. for us coaches, it was much easier. I had the feeling that the games become, become more tactical. Mm -hmm. And uh, we missed the, the spectators a lot, of mm -hmm. course, a lot. That energy is... And it, you, you felt that the momentum that a, um, a crowd can create was missing. Mm -hmm. So it was more tactical, it was more controlled. Because, like, for example, in a Champions League match or in a Premier League match, there can exist some minutes where you just lose control of mm. this match as a coach because the energy is there. If you play in Liverpool, if you play at Stamford Bridge, uh, uh, um, uh, a Champions League match at, at night, they can, um, this can create an energy where, it's, where you cannot hold it anymore. Mm. So the, the players are, are there just, mm. just going wild mm. and, um, and it's, it's very difficult to coach them. But we are living for this kind of moments to create this kind of energy. As a coach, it was it was more controlled without mm -hmm. spectators. Mm -hmm. But it's, no it's fun. It's an emotion. Yeah, but no fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Thomas, you know, you talk a lot about intuition. In many of your interviews, you say there's no logic here. It's just a gut feeling. Yeah. You cannot explain it with logic here. And even when we had a lot of conversations, you speak a lot about it's all about intuition. Mm. So what is intuition for you? And uh, was there a time, oh, I wish I listened to my intuition in the past, uh, it would have been better. Now, yeah. has it, you know, have you refined your intuition and you feel this is one of your core strengths in what you do? Yeah, and I think it's also down to experience, I have mm -hmm. to say, like what we call maybe sometimes intuition is maybe a feeling that is developed because you unconsciously unconsciously recognize the situation over and over again you have experienced it and it gives you a, f a good feeling or a bad feeling in your stomach mm -hmm. and then we call it maybe intuition mm -hmm. but to listen to our gut and to have a healthy gut for that <laughs> and to listen is a, is a is a huge part of it and i will not miss it and i will not underestimate it mm -hmm. you can plan a lot of things and and especially in coaching nowadays it's about planning about organizing and finding the right setup. But especially during a match, I, I, I would also, I would always love to keep my intuition. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you regret it, that you don't, that you did not follow your feeling mm -hmm. straight away. And you maybe uh, go into an exchange with your assistant coaches. They have a different view. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes you have the feeling, ah, it, it held me back. Mm -hmm. I should have been more active, I should have made a substitution or a change of tactics. But it's a huge part and I think it comes more and more with, uh, with experience, mm -hmm. that you experience these kind of situations and you develop a feeling for it. And uh, yeah, it, it's not everything is explainable in, in this kind of coaching. It's very hard to, to put it into words and, and, 
and uh, this is an aspect that I will not miss and mm. um, I will always trust also my, my, my gut feeling. Yes. And the more, the longer you take for a decision, the more your brain comes mm -hmm. and uh, holds you sometimes back from being brave, from being, show some courage or mm -hmm. be creative. So I, I try to, to, to not lose connection to my gut. Mm -hmm. So you mean to say intuition is about be as aware as possible with your yeah. any experience. So you can, in yeah. future when something is similar, you know, I don't want to do that again. Let me be more creative this yes. time. And also on a, on a subconscious level, mm -hmm. like no, now you, in, in this case, you would be very aware. Oh, I experienced this. I, I don't want to do this again. But in our intuition level, it's, I think it is also an experience, but maybe you, de it's, you cannot even explain how you felt it. Mm -hmm. That you think like, I think if I change now this player, I think he could make the real difference. Or I had to, sometimes it builds up through weeks that mm -hmm. you have, or like through a training session. And I feel a body language from a player different. And it gives me a gut feeling, a feeling, an intuition that maybe I should let him start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And maybe he had a bad match before and maybe I, and, and sometimes I surprise my assistant coaches when they think, yeah, the lineup is clear and I come on the morning of a match day and say, you know what, mm -hmm. this guy this has guy. to play. Mm -hmm. And they say, why this guy? He did like, he had like two bad matches. I said, yes, but I saw him yesterday in training. I saw him uh, laughing. I saw him in, in the finish. I saw him in an exercise. I have a feeling it's uh, it's good for him. It will work. And, so, it and then I stick with it. And, and sometimes it, work. it works, and sometimes <laughs> it does not work. So, um, of course not. But yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, this intuition, I think, builds up over over experiences and over observations. Mm -hmm. And to be as present as possible. Yeah, be present as possible. Yeah, never be like just there never f uh, get bored never mm. be like wow, okay passive, this training yes. is now yeah never be passive never never sleep like also as a coach i think it's very important that's why i'm now also here to recharge and be awake mm -hmm. because um, it can happen i think it can happen with a team is such a sensitive structure in mm -hmm. a football team it can happen all the time like it can you can uh, if you don't take care about the little fight, about the little argument, maybe it gets respectless in a moment. You have to take care about it. It's my belief. Mm, a little add on. And yeah, and if you if you compound. just let it go, on, it it will be maybe uh, you have two players fighting. They go to the dressing room. They have their groups, and suddenly it's four players, eight players, and, and, and you don't know where it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in a positive way, maybe you miss a, a, a spark where mm -hmm. you maybe see at the player, and you have a, a, an idea that you say, oh, I think I should let him. He had some. He had some good training sessions. Mm -hmm. He has a good mindset. He has a good body language. I think he. We should put him on the field. That's very much like the holistic aspect of healing. You know, you have to consider yeah. everything, not just and one aspect. And to be a bit unpredictable for unpredictable. your players. Yes, yes. That the player always knows. Oh, when, when I don't get like also when I don't get passive, when I don't get negative the coach sees it and the coach rewards it so mm -hmm. there's always a short way into the team mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's necessary for a player to work the hard way and mm -hmm. go the long way yes. but uh, if you stay positive if you behave in a certain way if you keep uh, supporting every uh, the, the process there's always a way in through intuition mm -hmm. it's super interesting what you're sharing because in ayurveda we always say one of the first ways to enhance or uh, upgrade your health is to become very observant of your body's urges and feelings. Okay. And many people, when they disconnect and when they don't listen to their body's messages, that is when the disease will compound and time yeah. happens when it just becomes, why is this happening? Where is this uh, disease yeah, where coming does this from? Come from? So that being observant is one of the foundations of that yeah. uh, holistic way of recovery from some terrible things that a person mm -hmm. could go through. Okay. It's interesting what you're saying in that yeah, part. Yeah, I can website. totally see that. And, uh, and Thomas, you know, uh, we see that some players need not be a great coach. And so you'll see some of the greatest coaches need not be a great test player that we have seen. Yeah. Now, why I ask this, you know, you see a lot of doctors. They need not be the healthiest people. True. <laughs> and, but they know how to treat others. Yeah. <laughs> so I was al always thinking, why is it like that? You know, they are fantastic in preaching, but when it comes to their own life. I was a great example of that. At one point of time, I was one of the un unhealthiest persons. But then I realize it has nothing to do with being a doctor. It just sure. knows that. So what makes a coach a really good coach? Because it's all about getting the best out of the other person. Yeah. 
and it's it's like if you are a fantastic player it does not mean that at the same time that you're also a fantastic coach Good. i think it helps you it can help you a lot if you have the mindset if you have the skill set and if you have the skill set to be a good leader mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. off the pitch, then it can help you a lot. I would give uh, a lot for having these experiences mm -hmm. on top. I never had them on the highest level. So now I'm very grateful that I can, uh, um, that I have the chance to, to live my dream on, on this kind of level and, and be part of, of, of football on this kind of level. But I think for what what um, what has become clear that sometimes the the, the most creative players or is my is my belief and and maybe my explanation does not have to be right like the most creative players or like the, the most impressive players who struggled as a coach played maybe also from their gut mm -hmm. maybe they saw stuff that they could not even explain maybe they saw the game differently maybe they saw the game slower faster spaces opening up that nobody else saw and it, it felt like a genius mm -hmm. on the field but maybe it was very hard for him even to explain mm -hmm. uh, how he does it i once knew a, a, um, a player who was a very a fantastic free kick mm. shooter once we wanted to exp let him explain to the youth team how he's doing it, he struggled to explain it. Mm -hmm. He could show it a hundred times, but he could not explain it how, how, he, how, how, how his foot uh, hits the ball, how his other foot steps up, how his timing, mm -hmm. uh, how many steps he takes. It was just pure intuition and, of course, repetition. So this example maybe tells you tells you a lot about it because we wanted to have his knowledge for our mm -hmm. youth teams, but um, no hard feelings at all. But he he could not explain it properly. Mm -hmm. He could just show it. So we tried to film it and showed it to our to our players, which was also nice and very helpful. But uh, this explains maybe why sometimes it's not a given that the fantastic players at the same time mm -hmm. a fantastic coach. So. If I have to sum up, it's like a coach is able to replicate uh, one genius skill in another person. You know, I, you break it down into, into chunks, you yeah. tell the other person how you can replicate that. It's very complex, yeah. It's one part of it. The other part is to see potential, to, to, to help somebody to, to reach his potential because it always has to be in the player. It is a player's game. Mm -hmm. So you're more a helper, you're a facilitator. You're somebody who pushes someone who needs to be pushed. You're somebody who protects someone who needs to prote be mm. protected, who needs to be calmed down. So um, you have a huge influence on your staff around the players. Like in, in Chelsea, they were working around 80 people around, mm -hmm. around the first team to push 24 players to, to the limit. So you're also very important for them like to create a, a culture that everybody goes into the right direction mm. and goes into the direction how can we influence this team to win the next football match because this is uh, what mm -hmm. it is uh, um, all about and then it becomes very very complex and you don't have to I think you don't have to I am certainly not the best uh, 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 football player and I have never been so it's not always necessary to explain everything I think it's 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 absolutely okay to also ask to get feedback from mm -hmm. the very best players uh, mm -hmm. in, in the world. Why should I tell Thiago Silva how to defend? Mm -hmm. He knows how to defend. He tells me where he feels comfortable, where he needs protection. And then I to try to um, adjust our system and uh, to, to create a behavior as a team that he feels confident. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, hopefully everybody feels confident. And then it's a, then it's a give and take. But it's not that I explain him like a youth player how he should have his body position. Mm -hmm. He's far too experienced and far too good that he needs that kind of advice. This is, for example, a huge difference between youth football and then the highest level of coaching. Mm -hmm. That's quite phenomenal. I mean, it's more about creating that culture where everyone feels this is where I perform better and you identify and putting them in the yes. right place. Yes, and then you need to find a tactic and, and they, they know very well like does he know what he's speaking about? Does he analyze the opponent properly? Does this really happen? And does the training make sense? Is the training fun, actually? Are we fit? Mm -hmm. So all, also the basic things. So, Thomas, you know, when you talk about winning, you know, when, yeah. you, when, you, saw, when you see some briefing on the TV before the match is going, the coach will come and say, 
boys, I just wanted to enjoy the game. You know, yeah. they say it like that. Yeah. Mm. But at the same time, the moment the match starts, you could see the yeah, expectation. Yeah. My God, yeah. why are you not playing like this? Why are you not? I mean, we as yeah, a spectator yeah, also expect that. So in spirituality, we say enjoy the process, dissociate from the outcome. Yeah. It, it's easier said than doing it. Yeah. But do you think that is possible? If yes, how? I think I said it myself. But listen, if you if you're not prepared for it to play with freedom in your mind, to play with courage, that you're allowed to take risk. But you, if you, if the player does not feel it, it will not help him. If I tell him, hey, mm -hmm. play with freedom. It's it's just a game mm -hmm. because maybe he feels the biggest pressure. And sometimes I have to tell you, I step out even now as a coach. And I feel the tension, like in big matches, I feel the tension that immediately I admire my, my, my players, how they can feel under such kind mm -hmm. of pressure, emotions and, and the tension in, in big matches. I'm not sure if I could, could do it. I was never on that level. So the thing is, what is true about this sentence that we coaches or me as a coach, we want to play our uh, players to play with a freedom and to don't think about the fear and the danger, what can happen, but to think positive about it and be brave. But you have to install this feeling before. This is my belief. Mm -hmm. So like one of our like credos is more or less like that we try to implement is like we we train how we play and then we play how we train mm -hmm. means like we we want to really create an atmosphere in training where we are super competitive where we take every minute seriously to really get better and to really challenge ourselves in training and not just get over with mm -hmm. um, and 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 uh, really worship it and take it serious to prepare us that we can then say okay in the game we do what we do in training mm -hmm. and it takes a little bit the sentence takes a little bit the pressure off um, but um, it's it's far easier said than done mm -hmm. um, it is uh, very like very common to say yeah it's not only about the result it's also about the process mm -hmm. but uh, the end result like my experience, <laughs> my experience in Chelsea, in Paris, in Dortmund, in Mainz, it is about the result, result I yes. have to tell you. Mm -hmm. And um, you can overcome one loss, you can overcome a, a short period of a results nice, that are missing if, you, if, you, if the players feel, yeah, yeah, but we are on the right way, but mm -hmm. it cannot be too long, otherwise nobody trusts the process anymore. So to really worship the process in a daily basis. I think this is the, the, the most important and, and where I try to be really, really strict and disciplined with the players. Mm -hmm. So be on time, be friendly, be respectful. It starts with this, but then how we train. Again, be on time, mm -hmm. uh, be, be ready, be awake, give your very best. And then you, have, uh, you, will, you will feel maybe a certain freedom that in the game we don't, ex uh, we don't expect on top of it. We just mm -hmm. expect what you do as a habit. Mm -hmm. That's maybe the ideal scenario. But it is also a mindset. I experienced this mindset, this change of mindset, when I went from uh, Mainz, where we did not play in, in European competitions and did not play for titles, and I did the step to Dortmund, where we played for international uh, competitions and we played for cup winning and we played, of course, also to become maybe champion in, in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. The mindset of the players was different to the ones in, in Mainz. Mm. They could play, for example, a normal match with full physical input, mm -hmm. but it was less mental stress for them. Mm. They were already used to it. They were on a, a bit more talented, they were more used to the level of stress. So they could already adapt, could uh, recover faster mm. and could play more matches on, on this kind of level. So I think, as you mentioned, worshipping that training as it is the most important thing. I think that's the... And worshipping your day, mm -hmm. like the, almost the whole day, like worshipping also like... And I, I, I always want to be observant. How do they treat the guys in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Does somebody take his plate and bring it back when he's finished? How, how do they treat the physios? Are they on time in, in their treatments? Um, are they disciplined enough to stay long enough after training to mm -hmm. take care about uh, recovery? Like all these things, so that, that we take a lot, a lot of care about little details because it makes the, the big thing work and, and it makes the big process work. 
I think you're also giving an advice for a, a management expert, you know, to run an organization. It is. It is yeah, I am not. The, I was not the only one to run the organization, but I was a, a, a big part in it and, mm -hmm. and try to lead by example and try to lead also how I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, I mean, your place here is full of friendly people. Mm -hmm. And not lot, not as patients, not only as patients, mm -hmm. but also your, like the staff here, you yourself, super friendly, super helpful, um, very open, and and on the highest level of of, of quality. So mm -hmm. uh, it's it's quite what what everybody wishes for his uh, for his um, for his organization, and I think it's a perfect platform to 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 to, to perform on the highest mm -hmm. level and to grow. Yeah. I think I was remembering one of interviews of Steve Jobs. He said, it's not just the outside design, the inside design where people can't see. Even that should yeah. be beautiful. Only then the outside design will yeah. have it. I can and it's the same, you know, absolutely understand. Like how we treat patients outside, our staff also treats themselves with that love absolutely. and care. Yeah. Right? Why, why should it be different? Exactly. Of course. Exactly. And Thomas, after doing this intensive two, you know, three weeks of Panchakarma, yeah. Is there something that you learned new in your mindset or something new that you learned for your coaching or did it, you know, I learned you I can yourself? survive without sugar. <laughs> there, is, there is life without sugar because I am uh, quite, uh, some would say addicted. I would maybe not, not say addicted, but I like my, my chocolate, my desserts. Um, um, there, yeah, something to take now. Yeah, a lot of things. I mean, how the place is set up, the, the experiences, the memories, the, um, in combination with the temperature, the location, but how you set your place up, like having this kind of routine, having uh, uh, a lowest amount of distractions, mm -hmm. being with yourself. So actually gives me a lot of self-confidence in the, in, the, in the basic meaning. Mm -hmm. I'm, I have the feeling right now after three weeks, I'm very aware of myself. I'm quite okay with myself, quite happy with myself. I allow myself to be, to be, to be happy, not to force things and, and let it come. And I'm, I feel self-confident, I feel happy, I feel healthy. And like I said, it was for me a kind of a, um, a ceremony or like a, to close things, but also like to, to restart things. Mm -hmm. And it, it feels really good right now. Was there a time when you were doing the treatment? Oh my God, why am I doing this? Yeah, there was. <laughs> <laughs> like during the ghee, I have to say, I, I got a bit grumpy and I got a bit like, uh, now I'm like six days, even without fruits, mm -hmm. where you did not give me fruits, not the, the, the delicious watermelon, not the papaya, mm -hmm. not, the, not, like the, no sugar. not the pineapple. So there was zero sugar. There was not the honey. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, and, and the ghee drinking was not very pleasant. So there I had like two, three days where I thought like, I was not in the very best mood, but uh, I wanted to be here. I knew that it was coming or it could, that it could come and it, it did not last long because in, in general it's, yeah, it's nice to be here. It's grateful. I mean, the, the environment, the, the butterflies are so big, and, and mm -hmm. to have a view to the to the sea every morning, to hear hear the mm -hmm. sounds of it, it's, it's pretty coming amazing. Coming back to the ghee, after the ghee, do you feel a difference after that? After the ghee therapy? After the ghee therapy, yeah, yeah, I feel a difference. I feel a difference in my stomach. Uh, I feel a difference in in in. Uh, when I look into the mirror also, I lost some, some, some kilos. Uh, I have a very calm sleep at the moment. Mm -hmm. I can sleep very early, which is here, of course, a bit easier than, um, than at home because you have also the routine maybe mm -hmm. to bring the children to school and then a bit of more distraction. Um, you have television at home, <laughs> but uh, in, in general, it, it um, it was not such a nice feeling in my in my stomach during right after the, the during the ghee, but after feel very calm. That's good. And Thomas, when you when you look at the whole process, yeah. And uh, on one hand, you will see most of the people who come for these treatments are women. This is one yeah. thing that I've seen okay. people coming for retreats, whether it's yoga or Ayurveda or such retreats or detox. You'll see more women coming than men. Yeah, okay. Since I'm, we are men, what do you think men should hear, you know, should <laughs> we also <laughs> get into more of these treatments because we are told, no, 
we go for such treatments only when we are really really sick yeah and also considering the pressure that is being put on yeah i i think it's a fantastic experience also for me mm -hmm. and and i can totally see like the male thinking and 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 the roles in which we are put and uh, i often enough live up to it uh, absolutely maybe the women are more open but um, yeah it is and I want to be very honest, it is a bit of an obstacle to overcome, to go at six o'clock for yoga and see a lot of women and you wear your gymnastic clothes and you're <laughs> like the most stiff guy in the whole group. So it's not so nice always to, to do this. But um, if you are objective, it, you feel better after. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I can just say like as... Uh, I never felt like uh, people were pointing the finger. Mm -hmm. I had some, uh, also some, I met nice, nice men here, also um, in, in very male positions and then uh, in, uh, who, who uh, live up to their, to their male role in the <laughs> outside world. But uh, there is, uh, it's about, it's about well-being, it's about health, it's about your body. There, mm -hmm. there cannot be a difference between male and female. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, uh, Maybe the female are a bit smarter in, in these <laughs> terms than us and a bit more aware of, of their well-being. So I can just say, I can just recommend to do it even if I did not feel sick, mm -hmm. even if I did not feel like in a, in a total burnout or something. Um, I will try to do it regularly and um, to stay healthy. Thank you, Thomas. That was a <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, discussion. I really loved your input and everything. Anything else you want to share? <laughs> no, I talked a lot. <laughs> Maybe Thank too you much. all. Thank you very much. Thanks.